Okay, thank you for the <clears throat> introduction. Uh, yeah, my name is Alfonso Rodriguez Molares. I come from the Norwegian University of Science and Technology, and I'm going to talk to you about uh, a new method that uh, will help to uh, detect needles in medical applications. So, first, I will introduce some uh, uh, problems in imaging uh, specular reflectors, then talk about some well, an artifact that maybe you have already uh, observed uh, in, uh, when imaging needles, uh, which is a beam misalignment artifact. I will introduce some theory about the image source localization technology that we have developed at NTNU, um, and then provide some results on the accuracy of this method and its performance uh, um, in needle uh, and in vitro setup. So, as you may know, specular reflectors are poorly visualized in ultrasound. Here we see an image of a, a needle in an agar phantom. It's quite difficult to distinguish the needle, but only when they move it. But it's recognized because we have some shadowing effect uh, just behind it, and these two blob uh, pattern that is characteristic of the top of the needle tip when it's facing down. Um, sometimes uh, you may uh, find that, uh, yeah, the, the actual position of the needle is different from what you see in the ultrasound image. Uh, here I present a K-wave numerical simulation uh, uh, done with K-wave where I added some uh, thermal noise on top. And you can see that the, uh, this is showing the actual position of a planar reflector, but the actual image, the mode image that we get is in another position. Uh, and this is due to the beam misalignment. This is an actual image, a compounded image uh, with three different angles. Again, it's a needle in an agar phantom. Uh, and you may see that there are this part uh, or this uh, ish, yeah, line over here, which corresponds to diffraction in the actual needle, uh, and some uh, other shape over here that uh, corresponds to the uh, beam misalignment. And this could be quite, uh, yeah. Uh, Annoying when uh, for clinicians when they are trying to to, to uh, perform some uh, yeah operations. So uh, one way of understanding this problem better is by using the image source principle. So uh, this uh, is going to be our probe, and we have here a planar reflector, and we are going to focus our beam into a single point uh, uh, to produce a virtual source. The image source principle states that we can describe the, uh, the wave reflected from, from that uh, reflection or uh, from that reflector as, a, as if it were produced by an, an image source located symmetrically in respect to the reflector plane. So actually, the reflective beam won't follow the line that we are used to see, which is continuing in this way, but coming from another direction. So there is no wonder that we are having this beam artifact because the delays are not coming from this point, but from this point. So they are wrong. Uh, we have uh, published uh, um, um, yeah, a paper on the, this image source localization uh, technology, which uh, involves uh, uh, to focus the beam into uh, to produce a virtual source. Then we use a sound source localization algorithm to locate the image source, and then we reconstruct the, the shape of the reflector using uh, the mirror equation, which uh, is very well known in optics. So, yeah, some sort of localization algorithms are well known in acoustics. They are used in applications such as military to locate gunshots, uh, but also in multimedia technology uh, to locate a speaker in a room with a micro, uh, microphone array and trying to improve the signal to noise ratio. They normally involve the maximization of some kind of functional, like this uh, response power functional. Uh, here, uh, X, capital XN is the Fourier transform of the signal of one of the channels, and then we apply some, some uh, yeah, delay to that signal. And that delay is uh, related to the position of an hypothetical position of the sound source. You maximize this functional by hypothesis testing. And one of the methods that you can use to, to uh, maximize this uh, function in real time is the statistical region contraction, which is the one that we use in our implementation. Yep. So in order to uh, reconstruct the reflector, uh, we have simply to uh, solve this quadratic equation that you can see here. 
There, you have to insert the position of the virtual source, the position of the image source, the position of the beam, the origin of the beam, and then one single time of flying measurement, which you can carry out with a single transmission. Uh, by doing so, you get a value for phi, and inserting phi into these two equations, then you can have the position and orientation of the reflector. So depending on the value of phi, if it is greater or smaller than 0.5, we will have an, a concave or convex reflector. And it is even possible to re, um, estimate the radius and center of curvature of that reflector. But for a plane reflector, which is what, um, yeah, what a needle is, uh, we, uh, in theory, we should have 0.5 as the solution of this quadratic equation. So the reflecting point will be in between the image source and the virtual source. In practice, however, we do not generate a, a perfect point source when we focus our beam. So the absolute position of the virtual source will introduce, and the depth of field of our uh, focusing, will introduce some uncertainty into the sound source localization algorithm. So it is, yes, the best estimates are uh, obtained by solving this equation and applying that to, to the two equations we saw earlier. Okay, so this equation here is based on the paraxial approximation. And that means that the uh, beam orientation has to be normal to the uh, uh, planar reflector, which is obviously not the case. But the uh, reconstruction is quite good, all, all the same. So we can do the following. We can start with a situation where the beam is not aligned to the reflector, and then we get a bad estimation of our reflector. Then we can move our beam so that we get uh, an yeah, improved estimation of the reflector position and orientation. Now I will show some experimental results done with the ultrasonics scanner and a, a 5 megahertz probe. I recorded synthetic transmit aperture data set and performed the informing afterwards. Uh, on top of the recorded signal, I added some thermal noise uh, in order to have a control source of, of noise. So in the top row, we see three B-mode images, but those are there only for your consideration. The actual uh, information that comes into play is the one that is in the bottom row, which is channel data. This is the input of the image source localization algorithm. So in the first case, we have 30 dBs. In the second case, 10 dB signal to noise ratio, and in the last one, minus 5 dB. In the first one, we can see the aluminum plate uh, in the B mode image, and in the channel data, we can see very clearly the reflection in the aluminum plate, and also some reflections that go through the aluminum plate. So it is no wonder that the image source localization algorithm is able to reproduce this reflector very well, where here we have the origin of the beam, here is the virtual source, and the image source is somewhere around here. In the second case, we have a smaller signal to noise ratio, and we no longer can see the reflector in the B-mode image. However, in channel data, the waveform is still very clearly. The only reason that we don't see it into the B-mode image is because we are focusing in the wrong location. So it still is uh, no surprise that the image source localization algorithm is able to locate this wavefront and uh, reconstruct the reflector. The last one, we have a negative signal to noise ratio, and we, of course, see nothing in the B-mode image. And if you are able to see a small correlation here, this is the, the wavefront that is still barely observable there. And the image source localization method is also able to locate that correlation and place the reflector in the right position. But however, you may see that now the image source is not in the same location. And that's the reason you should solve the quadratic equation rather than assuming 0.5. Uh, last result with a, a 20G cannula and an agar phantom. The, and again, I used uh, um, yeah, synthetic transmit aperture data set and performing afterwards. I present you two images, and stardom, standard B mode image, and an image compounding uh, one. And we can see the, the, the needle here, 
and here it's a bubble, a bit of shadowing here. It is perhaps a little bit better uh, when in the compounded image, but here we can see the beam misalignment artifact. i uh, show you the real position of the needle and the reconstruction with the image source localization method. Another example, quite similar, but here we can see the two blobs pattern uh, more clearly. This is the position of the needle, and this is the uh, estimation with the image source localization method. The last example is more challenging, have a angular um, a till of almost 55 uh, degrees. Uh, this is the position of the needle, and this is the result of the image source localization method. So you can see the reconstruction is quite good until here, but then the error increases, and then it completely goes bananas. And this is uh, due to the fact that there is no optimal way of getting energy back. Even if we have uh, the beam, the transmit and receive beam here, most of the energy will go in this direction and then reflect it away from the needle. So there is no ref uh, specular effect, uh, energy to work with. So uh, what it does, this image source localization method, is to uh, perform a statistical search for the optimal transmit and receive beams. But, uh, and in that way, it can, it can be described as an adaptive beamforming algorithm. It provides better detection than com uh, standard beam mode or image compounding. And in theory, it could be run in almost real time because uh, the current implementation that we have in C++ with multi-core but no GPU uh, is, uh, can pro uh, process one uh, beam uh, in 3.3 milliseconds, which is around 20 frames per second. There are some challenges still, like the out-of-plane <laughs> problem, and we are looking forward to address that because there is no limitation uh, in the image source localization method to be applied in 3D and also um, test it in, in a clinical setup. That's all.